Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today I want to make the cover that goes over the shopping cart handle because of the situation we are in and I thought, well, you know what? Even if we weren't in COVID, this is a really nice thing to have. So I made one here for demonstration. Now I'm gonna make the one I'm gonna show you guys different. This has Velcro. I went ahead and did Velcro all the way down. So it's got the Velcro on both sides. I did the quilting on this side. So that is about 18 inches long, I do believe. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you I'm gonna make a blue one this time around. Now this is the color that I'm gonna use. It's this blue here and this darker blue. And then you'll need a piece of batting. And I'm gonna still make this 18 inches long and I'm going to make it six inches wide. Now I'm using up some Velcro, so I have a white strip, because all I've got right now is white and red. I tried to find this Velcro that I used in a roll, but for the life of me, I can't find it. So we're just gonna go ahead and go with what I got here. And then um, Megan made a comment that it didn't need to be a solid strip, like I did it on this one here. She said I could have just done a piece here and then took a break and did a piece there. So I'll go ahead and do that next time around because I'm actually going to make this blue one for her. And I will do go ahead and quilt it. So we just cut this the same exact size. You guys know how to cut it out. I don't need to show you that. So let me go ahead and do that first. I forgot to mention these are actually just two fat quarters. That's all I did to use different colors. You don't have to use different colors if you don't want. You can use the same color. So the first thing I'm going to do is take both my ends off. Then I'm measuring down 18 inches. Then I'm gonna cut it off there. This is 18 inches right here. From here, what I'll do is, I'll move these rulers here. Go ahead and I'm going to measure the other direction, but I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll take this on this end here I'll take off the edges here so I can go ahead and I can straighten this up based on the bottom down here. So I'll line it up down here and then cut it across there like that. And then all I'll do is take my ruler and this is where I need the shortest distance. And I had a six the last time I'm gonna use um, let's just make it a five and a half this time. It doesn't need to be a whole six. There we go, five and a half. I'll cut that off. Now, my batting is left over from another project, so what I'll do is go ahead and decide. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will quilt the light one. Just lay it on there like that, and then I'll quit it, quilt it. Don't need to do any pinning or anything. If you want to iron this, it'll kind of adhere to the batting, but I'm just going to leave it like this and quilt it on the machine. Uh, you can do straight lines if you want. Uh, use your walking foot so that you can figure out where it's at, or in that case, you can mark it. it just It's up to you, whatever you want to do. So let's go ahead and do that. All righty, I'm slipping this in real quick before I go on because I just got... I heard that a package was delivered. So I thought it was one of the ones I was expecting today. I go out there and I see it's from Walmart and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is, that doesn't look like my normal Walmart box. I don't get things from Walmart. Well, wait a minute. So it came like this and I'm thinking, well, well not online. I mean, y'all seen me do my unboxing. So Walmart doesn't look like that. So I thought, well, maybe they put my box in a box. Sorry. So I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, what heck? First off, it's well, not even addressed to me. I haven't pulled off, but... So it was addressed to Megan, and she goes, well, I haven't ordered anything from Walmart. I haven't. I, I'm very confused. And so we <laughs> went ahead and opened it because we don't know what it is. It said one of one. So she so opened open it up. It, and there's only one thing in there. And I don't know if you guys recognize that dog, um, but that's Scooby. And so I said, well, go ahead and we'll do a thank you because we don't know... If fruit somebody snacks. sent that to us for the dogs, or... No, that's fruit snacks. That's for people, not dogs. This is... Scooby this is, is... Uh -uh, Scooby is for children. Fruit-flavored snacks. It's fruit snacks. Oh, I thought it was dog. No. Scooby snacks are not for dogs. Regular for Scooby, people? No. Yes. 
So somebody wanted her to have Snoopy snacks? Scooby. Scooby. Snoopy. <laughs> this is not Snoopy. Snoopy's a white dog. Snoopy's a brown dog. <laughs> I know who Snoopy is. We He's like a Snoopy. Red <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you whoever sent it. I mean, I don't know who sent it. She doesn't know who sent it. Nobody told me. Here, oh, there you go. Okay, Pop, show, show proof them. Show that this. Uh -huh. snacks. You oh got Shaggy. You got Scooby. You got Velma, probably. You got, I don't know who else is on there. That's all I know. Uh, and you can tell I don't even eat that Daphne kind of stuff. Daphne Fred. So I have no clue. Oh, they got the mystery machine. No, I used to watch this Are when I was gummy little. gummy somethings or another? Fruit snacks, yes. Uh, oh, well, that's why. I don't do gummies. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't yeah. normally either. But well, uh, I just wanted to slip this in real quick. So if you recognize who you are, if you sent it, thank you. Thanks a lot. And I'm confused because I wasn't expecting it. But, and, but and I, I didn't purchase it. it because I wouldn't know what to purchase when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know what's good and what's not. So I don't know. But thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I mean, I can pretend like I'm still in elementary school and be like, "It's coming snacks! Yay!" <laughs> but I haven't seen these in years. I've never seen them, so I don't know anything about. I, like I said, I thought it was dog treats. The Scooby snacks that I grew up with were like know. little graham crackers, and they were in the shape of a dog bone. Like those little teddy bear, teddy grams and stuff like that? Is that mm -hmm. what you're talking about? Okay, but those were, I've seen. But they were in the shape of a dog bone and they had a snack on it. Because oh, okay. in the shows and in the movie, was there a movie? I don't think so. They gave Scooby, Shaggy was like, you want a Scooby snack? Here you go, Scoob, have a Scooby snack. I don't know. And Scooby was like, ruh, ruh, I dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks anyway. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go eat some. All right. And probably share some because I know other people who like okay. food snacks. All right. See you later, babe. Okay, so I'm going to put my walking foot on. If you guys have one, it'll look similar to this. Even the generics I don't think are any bigger than this. And then this, let me see. I think it has a bar. Let me check my box here and I'll tell you if it has a bar. Here's what the bar would look like. This is what the bar is. It Sorry. goes in. <laughs> it goes in on the side here, so it's got a hole right there, and you put it in there. And you can do it either way. You can either do it this way, and then this sits on the fabric like this. And then as this is moving along, this is your distance between your stitch and your last stitch or the next stitch or whatever. Or if you don't want to go that way, you can turn it on the other side. And it goes like that. So either way, so it's right or left side. And you can make it whatever distance you want. If you just want a little bit like that, you can do it that way. So it just depends on yours. I think when I bought mine for my um, older machine, I think it also came with a, with a little bar thing. But even if it didn't, you could actually make one of these. Think about that. That looks just like the skewer that you use when you tie up your turkey. And I would be thinking, you know, the ones that it's long like this and on the end of it's got like a little hole. You could do that. You could make yourself one, put it through your little foot there, just in case you lost yours, and then put something here to show. So, I mean, it's just a hint. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on right now on my machine. I've already taken my other foot off. And remember now, this piece here right there you take that piece and it goes where your needle so it slips in like this because this goes up and down as it moves and you really want to make sure that your needle on your machine is really tight because if not the vibration of all of this will loosen that needle and that needle will fall off while you're sewing along minding your business not paying attention next thing you know your needle is dropped off on you let me see if I can move this okay so it's a little bit of coordination. You're going to want to put that over the needle thing. Let me make sure I have this out enough. And then the two go together and then you tighten your screw. I try to usually get mine tight with my fingers first. And then I'll use my screwdriver. Now don't tighten this too tight because if you do, the plastic that's on here will literally crack and you'll break your foot. I mean, I know the, the feet aren't that expensive. The last time I bought one, I think it was like under $10. You're just making it snug so that it doesn't come off. I mean, if you make it a little bit snug and pull on it and it doesn't come off, it's on there tight enough. 
So I'm going to put this bar on here. Okay, because I'm going to make it about that distance. And I'll start at one end and then I'll just go to the other end. And like I said, I don't have it pinned down. If you feel like you need to pin it down, that's fine. Now I'm going to start out and I'm going to put it right here on the corner, which is my foot on the corner of my fabric. And I'm going to do it on the edge of my fabric. And I'm just going to go all the way down to the other end. Y'all going to do the same thing. Let me get you a little closer here. Now, you can also do a fancy stitch because this does have the capability of zigzagging. So if you want to do a zigzag down here, you can do a zigzag. If you want to do um, one of your fancy stitches, you could do that also. I don't know if I got it. Let's see. Do I have a fancy stitch I'd like to use? This number 24 here. It's called a single diamond overcast. And it shows the length at 1.8, but I'm going to make the length longer. And the width shows at 6, and I'm going to make it 7. And I better just do a practice, because if I don't, I'll have no clue what it looks like. So let's just do that for starters. And always lock it into place. And if you want to lock it in, and it wants to go, your machine, let's say, <clears throat> wants to go forward and then backwards, and you don't want it to do that, take your length and see what you've got it on right now that you're going to practice on. Keep it in your mind, take it down to zero, and your needle will only go up and down, up and down, up and down. It won't go forward on you. So in my case, I'm just going to go with my back button and see what it does. It's going to go up and down because that's the way this machine is programmed. But if your machine doesn't have a program like that and it wants to go forward and backwards, that's where you would take your length and put it down to zero so it doesn't move. So now it tells me my length is four and my width is seven. So let me see what does that look like. Because I want something kind of big. <laughs> and I'll have to hold this to keep it straight. I'm going to cut it and take a look at it. Okay, that's pretty good size. I don't know if y'all will be able to see it. Let me... See if I can take it up there to the, see this, okay, see what it looks like? All right, that's what I'm going to do. So let me move this aside. Let's put that up underneath there and start it. I'm going to go ahead and, and since I'm coming off to the end, which you can do, and what I'm going to end up doing when I get finished, if you don't want to lock it in place and you just want to start it, you can actually start either on the batting and come onto the fabric or start on the edge of the fabric. It's going to be your preference of what you want to do. So then you don't have to lock it in if you don't want. You can just start and it'll just start stitching. Okay, it's going to be up to y'all. Now I have two choices. <clears throat> One, I can start it right here and repeat this and do it right next to the foot here and just put it along the line or go ahead and go over, which is what I want to do, because I'm going to go about that distance and then I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact stitch and then I'm going to take this bar and I'm going to follow this line right here. And then I'm just going to repeat the process. Same exact stitch. <clears throat> I'm not changing it. Starting off the end. And it looks like it's only going to need one more row on here. And I don't have my speed on my sewing machine very fast because I don't really want to go that fast when it comes to doing this. I'll take a look at it. And here's how it looks. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim it up. Now, <clears throat> by trim up, this is what I do. I take my ruler, put it alongside my fabric here, and all I'm doing is going up the side of this fabric. That's it, taking off the excess. Just like that. All the way to the end. And then you can see where it like pulls on the fabric. This is why the things don't come out exactly the way that you think that they should. But this is okay. And I'm gonna show you why it's okay on this one. And then you have a couple of choices of what to do on this one. And I will tell them to you. Okay, so we have this here. And you know that I'm gonna use the other blue this one here, and you know this is petite, so it's whatever side you want it to be. See how the blue is here? That dark. And when you flip it over, it's not dark. It's a lighter one on here. So whatever side you want. And this is what we're going to do. Now remember, I've only got four, one, two, three, four, of that sewn, okay? Now you don't have to do it this way. This is the way I'm doing it. So I'm going to line it up. And you could have had a piece of fabric actually sewn bigger. In other words, if I wanted to, I could take this scratch piece here. Let me show you. So I could take this piece here and take this off. And if you're concerned because you're not good with your stitches, this is what I would do. So take this piece here, lay it down, put this on top. So you're not gonna have to worry too much about it not being exact. And then I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna put a stitch in between here, which will grab this fabric on the back side. So let me go do that and I'll show it to you. All right. Because sometimes when you make things the exact same size, unless they're sewn together in the very beginning, they end up being different. So let me pick a different stitch all right, let's do a wavy line, which in my case, it's number 18. Um, it says the length is one, but I am going to go with my width at six. Let's see how big that's going to be. So let me get my sample up here again. And we're going to try it out. I might want to make it bigger. Take a look at that. Uh, that will probably match it. Let me see if you can even see that. Ooh, I did just a couple of them right here. Can you see them? They look like little, like a bump. Let's go ahead and do that on here. And I'm gonna put that in between here for the rows. All right, so I'm going to adjust this so I can keep track right there. All righty, continuing on here. So I've lined up my little, it's almost smack dab up against it, but it's just a little bit off. So let's, I'm going to try to go down the middle here. going to be able to take this and flip it so don't worry about that because we're not flipping this one like I made the other one we're not doing it that way we're not doing it sandwiched and flipping it over this is just a different way to do it if you're, if you're in a big hurry I mean at any time you can do a little practice with sheets like this and cut them up and make them into this and you can also if you don't have any velcro because lots of people don't have velcro on hand you can make little ties you can tie that Okay, coming to the end. And I'm going to take a look at it. All right, let's cut that and take a look. 
So here's the way the back looks, just like that all the way down. And I'm gonna do it again, right down the next one. So I'm gonna do the next two, and then we'll go from there. We'll see what else we're gonna do. Get you a little closer here. I can make this, let's skip the next one and then I'll make it bigger, but we're gonna keep this one the same exact size just for uniform. Okay, so this is the one that I went ahead and I made my length 1.4. 1. 1. I kept the width at six. Okay, let's see if you can see the difference between them. See, that's a little bit bigger. Back you up here. Let's see if you can fold it this way so you can see. So when you're looking at it, this is the smaller, and that got a little bit bigger, the distance. Now I'm gonna go ahead, here's what the back looks like, because it's only three things that I did, and you can see it better where the middle one is the longer one. So let's do the left side. I'm gonna do a straight stitch on it. Let's take a look at this. Now look at that line, what I did right there. And closed it, but it's a straight line over here on the back. Now it's just holding that down. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. See, this is a great project. If you wanna try out your stitches, I'm gonna take this bar out here. So let's say that you wanna try out some of your stitches on your machine. I'd get a fat quarter, and the reason I'm saying fat quarter is because you can cut them down to make purses and all kinds of things, and then you'll already have it quilted, because you just gotta do it on the one side. All right, so I am gonna go right here, and let's see, I need to do, I'm wondering if that's wanting to grab underneath the bar because that is actually the G foot and I don't want to do the G foot. So let's skip that a minute. Let's go with something um, a little bit fancier. So we will do the hem stitching. That's a pretty neat looking one. Let's see, can I get it? All right, I can go to seven as the maximum width and I can go ahead and make my length a four. And let's try that. And then I'm going to put my foot on the left-hand side, well, as close to the left as I can get, and we'll go with that. All right, let's try that. So all I'm doing it's taking it and I'm cutting right off the edge here. And I'm trying to leave eh, probably almost a quarter inch. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. do it on the ends down here same way and actually what I'm going to do is first I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line before I cut that off and you can still use your walking foot no reason to not use it and this is just plain straight I'm going to back it up oops I got it. there we go come up a little bit there we go. There we go. 
I'm going to do it to the other side. Go ahead, flip it over. Do it to the other side. I'm just locking it in before we actually cut it off. cutting it you can see the line flip it over and you can snip this little piece off here and then here's the back looks like that Okay, and now you can put Velcro on it, and what I'll, I'll go up there to the ironing board, and what I'll do is I'll iron it like this, which helps me. Now, if you want to, you can put ties on it, just like this, and you can have a tie here and then just tie it, or if you want to do the Velcro. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Velcro so I can show you how to, do, to sew Velcro onto fabric. All right, so here's my Velcro. So I'm going to go about like that, and I'm going to cut this Velcro off. So I'll put a piece here, and then I'll put a piece down here. So what I'll do is I'll just take it, make it the same size, more or less, and cut it off. Alrighty. So you want to use one side, and let me show you what the grooves look like on it. But you can see the side. There you go. Now you can see that side right here and that's what we're going to sew on the edge we're not sewing on this part we're sewing on the edge right here now i'm taking off my walking foot and putting my regular foot back on okay how am i going to stick it down because well, some of them have a sticky on the back i don't have a sticky on the back okay so um, i have it laid where i want it approximately and then i'm going to the edge and i'm going to i'm going to show you here in a minute i'm going to pick my camera up and bring it over here now if you notice I put a couple of clips on here to hold it because pins don't really work that well so let me get you a little closer okay so Megan made a comment about there actually being a velcro with sticky on the back side I've never used it nor I've ever bought it she said she used it and it does, didn't work for her just giving you a heads up about it but anywho let's take a look at this so you can see that the needle maybe you can't see that the needle it's Get up underneath here so you can see the needle is down on this piece right here the edge like right here is where i'm going to sew now to begin with instead of doing a whole bunch of backing up and everything this is when i decrease my length of my stitch down to let's see if i can get over here without making y'all sick 0 0.8 that's what i'm going to do i'm going to stitch a little bit then i'm going to put it up back up to 2.5 now we're just going to take our time And I'm going to stitch a little bit, then I'm going to stop and change it. I need something, Megan. I just don't want to be backing up is all. There we go. Now I'm going to go back up to 2.5 as I burp my coffee. Oh, that's lovely. Take that out. Just take your time. And all I'm doing is putting it right up against that straight line that I did. No rhyme or reason. Doesn't need to be perfect. And when I get done with this one side, now I'm going to decrease it. Now that I'm coming back down, I'm decreasing my stitch again. And I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to flip it around. And then I'm going to come down the other direction. Now you don't need these clips. I'll put my needle down. Right in the corner and I've got my stitch length is still low and I know I'm covering up a piece of my little decoration but that's fine go back up with my stitch and come on down and then I'm going to decrease my stitch again I guess I don't have to sit and tap it I could just 
push it in and keep going. Alrighty, come to the end. Cut it. If you feel comfortable and you want to go across, that's fine. You can do that. I don't normally go across that. And to figure out where do I want the other one. And I'm using the same exact piece now. Let me show you the two pieces. Let me back up a little bit here. So this has the fuzzy on it. And this doesn't. This is the gripped part. So can you tell the difference here? This is the fuzzy. And this is the one that's got the grips on it. Well, you can even hear it. See, it's a big difference in sound also. So we're going to put this one on now at the bottom down here. I'm going to do it the same way. And I'm going to come about that far down. You can measure it if you want to. You want to be totally precise about it. But I'm just doing a guesstimate. And I think that's fine. Let me start my needle here. Okay. Let me get you a little closer. As I stitch it. Let me come this way here. There we go. And I've already got the stitch down. And I'm going to increase it to 2.5. Oops, I forgot to, and now that I forgot to decrease, I'm going to flip it around, decrease it this time, and then start stitching, which I should have done before. But we'll just go, I'm just doing the decreasing part to lock it in is all. Okay. And you know, this is reversible. You can use either side. Go ahead and clip off my ends here. Tidy it up, make it neat before I start the next. And you know, you can put little marks on it if you have to, if you feel like that's what you gotta do. Now, you know, this is gonna go on the shopping cart. This doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, just as perfect as you want it. Let's put it that way. I don't know how many people are gonna make comments. I haven't seen anybody yet that goes to my grocery store that's used one of these. I mean, I see them Mar uh, wiping off their carts with the sanitizer and everything, but I've never seen them use one. So let me show you. So, so far, that's what it looks like. And now we're going to put the other on. Now you're thinking, how do I know where to put the other on? Well, let me show you. Alrighty, so this is the way it would be rolled on the cart, and this would come over on top of it. So you're going to want to put the other pieces over here. Now, like I said, I ironed this down for starters. So I'll take it here and right here and I make sure they're the same size they are and they can be a little bit smaller that's no problem there okay I think that one's that so we'll put it right here and I'll go ahead and I'll put some clips on it to hold it down and then you're going to have to eyeball it. And let's see. So it would go like that. Now if I want, I could go a little further down on here. In other words, follow where those little lines stick out. Which puts this over a little bit more. Which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come down to right there alrighty like that and you can move these as you do them just like that I'm gonna come down and go right above where that line is and that's where I'm going to sew it but I've got it lined up across here so I know that they'll match Let me go like this with it so they'll go right here this will go on top of it and fold over on it okay so let me get that set up to flip my fabric and now I'm going to do it on this side. Now keep in mind when you get done you're going to have your two velcro strips in this case are going to be on one side of the fabric and two are going to be on the other. Don't get confused and put them all on the same side. Now keep
keep in mind, if you make a mistake, you're going to be really hard pressed to get those stitches out, especially if you make them as small as I just did. That really buries itself. Let's take a look at it. All right, here's the one side. And now we have the other side up here at the top. So we're going to have to put this one on next. So I'm going to go like this, which is what I did before. Fold it over. Take a look at it. And put it in the same area, just like that. And then go ahead and I'll put my little clips on it. Alrighty, so we're going to repeat the last one. And we've got our smaller stitch length on. And this is just my regular foot, and that's a 12 um, needle, guys, so nothing's changed on this. I haven't changed any of my needles or anything. I'm using cotton thread. And you know, you can zigzag this if you want to. It doesn't need to be a straight stitch. If you want to zigzag that, you can. Oh, heck, you could probably put a fancy stitch on it if you wanted to. Alrighty, here you go. Here's the one side that we just finished, and there's the other side. And you go like that, like that. That's it. You put that right on the handle at the grocery store. Alright, that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I'll see you next time. And like I said, you can always take this and make ties on it if you want. If you don't have Velcro or you don't want to have anything to do with Velcro, it's up to you. Now, I would actually um, use, and I wish I could find it for you because I would show it to you. The Velcro that I have in a roll that I bought is for using on children's clothing. And that would have been the best to use. But for the life of me, I cannot find my container. So I don't know where I've put it up. I set it somewhere. Lord only knows. I can't wait till I go through this room. But anywho, once I go through my room and I start boxing everything up um, for a few years when I move, oh my gosh, the things I'm going to find, unbelievable, and the things I'm going to do when I find them. I'll just take you from one project to another because I've just got so many things buried in three different rooms. My, this sewing room kind of exploded on me. Alrighty, so that's it, guys. Thanks for my babbling. Thanks for listening to me rattle on. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you.